Greetings, everyone. I'd like to introduce you to my good friend, Jill, who is joining us today. Jill is a high performance coach. He's an athlete, trail runner, a dad. And as Jill has just shared, he's a dad of three beautiful kids. Jill works in the field of respiratory and metabolic uh, in terms of bettering one's metabolic system. And really at the end of the day, Jill has shared that he really wants to help as many of his human uh, fellow uh, friends and family members accordingly. So Jill, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thanks for having me, Darren. Jill, can you share a little bit more about who Jill is and what have you been up to? Well, Jill has quite a quite a weird, extensive background. You know, I started in the, the hotel business uh, and, uh, you know, in, in my young age of about 20 and, uh, you know, moved up the ladder in the hotel business as account manager and so forth. And then I became a real estate agent where I spent a good 12, 13 years in, in real estate and really grew my business quite high. And, uh, in 2015, I got my personal training, uh, um, license and accreditations, and, uh, I've never really stopped since uh as being a you know performance coach and and uh you know as a personal trainer and i always want to further my development mentally is my mind learning more about how the human body works how the human brain works mental health issues and so forth so i was always intrigued at learning more than just helping people uh, lift weights for example. And, um, but throughout my years, I, I, I learned a lot, of, obviously, um, uh, a lot of information about who I really am because of all the trials and tribulations and the mountains to climb and the mountains to, you know, to, to skid down or to fall down. And, uh, you know, I think I've, <laughs> I've, I went as low as someone can go and I went, you know, high on the mountain and uh, I learned a lot that the people that are able to bounce uh, you never lose that bounce meaning when you do fall that you can bounce back up and to to one of the biggest lessons someone told me is that you know you have your five people core friends or acquaintances or, or whatnot and surround yourself with really positive good influence, uh, people that can pick you up, people that can motivate you, uh, people that can teach you things. So I, I made sure that I, I always hung out with either the smartest people or those people that can pick you up, motivate you, and make you a better person. Mm, that's awesome, Jill. Jill, you had touched a little bit about trials and uh, tribulations through life. Mm -hmm mental health and can you share a little bit about your experience uh regarding your own mental health maybe a little bit more about trials and tribulations and and maybe some experiences of some mental health challenges with some inner circle of friends mm -hmm. yeah for sure well it, it for me the it, there's some uh, some trauma experiences I've experienced um, in in the early 2000s, mid 2000s, and I kind of just buried it as a man would do, and I did good at it, buried it, no problem. You know, I was uh, top of my game in real estate. I was top three percent in Canada with Roll a Page, and uh, I kept it buried, very good, but still kind of. It was still hurting and coming out in short little spurts, mental health issues. And uh, but it all came crashing down in, the, in 2013 when the, uh, my best friend, um, who was my training partner, we'd always train at 3.30 at Good Life. And uh, we'd always have coffee at 10 a.m. And uh, so I saw this best friend twice a day. And on the weekends for, you know, for, uh, for fun. And uh, a couple of times I, I knew he was going through a lot of mental issues. And Dave, uh, I, I caught him into 
um, one time when he attempted uh, a suicide where I was able to intervene. And, uh, but the last time was December uh, uh, 13th in 2013. And that was the last time that, uh, you know, that uh, I seen Dave alive and that's when he, he did it. Uh, he committed suicide and that was a huge turning curve for me where everything that I buried, all those trauma that I buried all came out and that's when life became unbearable where I started really deep into alcohol and not like a daily drinker but a uh, full-on binge where 24-7 and uh, I remember my first binge where basically I had to be you know hospitalized then brought to a, to a detox facility and from almost, you know, almost dying. And uh, unfortunately, that didn't bring me out of it. it uh, I would slowly keep going back into, you know, uh, detox and out. And I would start climbing that mountain again. And uh, I just couldn't deal with the, you know, the, uh, the guilt of, you know, the suicide of my, uh, my best friend. And uh, finally got out of it, but I, I, in about 2015, when I became a personal trainer, and I lasted maybe about a year, but unfortunately, my uh, the girlfriend at the time had some mental issues and attempted suicide, and that, and I was sober for almost about a year at that point, and that brought everything all back. So I knew I wasn't healed. It was just basically suppressed and I just basically stayed off alcohol and I thought I was cured, but obviously I was not. And after that, uh, that attempted suicide, everything came out and uh, mental health went to a breaking point where basically it was always life and death. Every binge, I don't know how many times I woke up intubated at the hospital, you know, with intubation tubes in you to you know, alcohol seizures to, I did that until maybe a few years ago. And I just, when the doctor brought me around and uh, he said, you had an alcohol seizure. You see that gentleman over there? He had a seizure just like yours and he didn't wake up and you did. You're an athlete. You're very lucky that you're an athlete because you wouldn't be alive today. And, uh, now it's up to you because it's Russian roulette. And on that time I was on Valium, but I still remember everything the doctor said to me. And that was the last time I ever, you know, drank was, you know, it was right before that. But that doctor, for some reason said, you know, you have kids, you know, you have, you're an athlete, you know, get going. So that was, that was my, uh, my near death experiences, it was rushing roulette. It was going to happen. He didn't say, he didn't say if he said it's when, is it the next one or is it the next one after that? But really it's just, uh, it's rushing roulette at, at this point, especially with the alcohol seizures. So when I did decide to change, I reached out for help with uh, people that I searched for help in the past, you know, starting with uh, on Albert street with the mental health clinic. I said, listen, I'm on a journey to fix myself. And uh, the first thing was to, uh, to deal with forgiving, you know, all those people that, that created trauma in my life, including my best friend, Dave, you know, like he caused a lot of trauma to a lot of people. So I had to forgive him and I had to forgive myself for not being able to save him the second time. And, and then forgiving, you know, other things that were traumatic moments in, in, in my life. And uh, the hardest thing is to forgive yourself. And that, and that took even like being, you know, uh, no alcohol for the last few years. Uh, it's still hard. The hardest thing to do is to forgive yourself. And you're always going to have to forgive yourself. It's never just, oh, I forgive myself for the past. No, you're going to make mistakes along the way. And uh, the hardest thing is to, to really forgive yourself. You can say, ah, oh, I, for, I forgive it. I, you know, uh, I'm a better guy than that. But 
you really need to actually be present and, and say, I forgive myself for what I did and, and, and move forward with the steps to, to be able to, you know, move forward in life and climb that mountain. Mm. Yeah. Joe, Joe, can you share a little bit about what some of those steps looked like to help climb your own mountain? Well, I had to look at the, the wheel and obviously I've taken a lot of uh, uh, different courses since 2013 to try to get out of my situation, you know, up and down, up and down, up and down. And I was in, up in the hospital and so forth is I had to find the right system, which was kind of like a wheel. You know, you had to, to your spiritual side, your work uh, balance your your health and fitness your mental health your your you know church whatever that may include for you to your friends and loved ones family to make sure that everything is balanced and when it unbalances if you if I train too hard it's hard on my mental health because I'm pushing too hard so all of a sudden then you have to readjust so constantly readjusting the wheel to make sure that it it's it's rolling as smoothly as it can that was the biggest thing i learned and and brought into um, my rehabilitation and i think that was quite successful now i've done really good courses and i'm trying to think of the name uh, of it and it had to do with strategies in in your life and uh that course was uh was your 10 people and you read a book you have to write a letter to yourself at the end of forgiving yourself and a letter to let's say i had to do a letter for dave to forgive him very emotional very hard to do a letter at the end to let go to say i love you and I'm letting this go. Very, very, uh, very hard to do, but uh, I must say that was one of the most impactful courses I've taken. I think it was called Grief Recovering, a handbook for grief recovering. Just an amazing course. And um, if anybody wants to reach out, uh, I know who gives the course, Jeanette. So um, what an amazing course. Mm. Mm. Julia had... Uh... We had touched on prior to coming on live today about motivation. So can you share a little bit about your motivation uh, today? Yeah. Well, and, and a little bit about that motivation that got you to today. Exactly, because there's different motivation through different process. When you're, you know, when you're intubated, you know, uh, and at the hospital, and when you just get out of the hospital, what's your motivation then? What was my motivation then? My motivation was, I want to be a grandfather someday. You know, I see you being a grandpa, and I see your pictures every day. I may not comment on them, but I'm like, wow, what a beautiful experience it must be to be a grandfather, because it's a beautiful experience to be a parent. So my motivation was family. I want to be able to to provide, to be there emotionally, uh, mentally uh, for my family. And uh, I want to show that, you know, that people can go really deep in life and go really, I don't know if anybody can go as low as I went without dying, but I've done it. And now it's about to the motivate, to motivate others that, when they do hit their own rock bottom, wherever that may be, that there's always hope. And my motivation was to inspire other people, even if it's, you know, uh, 30 people in an audience or 100 people in an audience when I'm speaking on a speaking engagements, you know, you reach one person and you change the life of one person or at least change the course. You're not going to, one speech is not going to change their life, but it might change the course of their life. And that was my motivation. Is is to not make thousand dollars, you know, thousand dollars a day, or you know, the financial freedom. You know, yes, that's one of your motivation, but it was to help as many people as I can, mentally, physically, um, 
and, and show them just little steps on what they can do, just using the wheel um, to showing them that, you know, physical fitness, what it can do to your, to your depression, to do it in a healthy way, of course, because, you know, at, at the start of my journey, my motivation was to get healthy. And then I, I overdid it. It's like you, you turn one addiction to another. So I had to calm that down and say, I got to stay healthy balance. What's my healthy balance now? the amount of running and training that I do would probably be way out of whack for a lot of people. But with, with my being an athlete, uh, it's, it's balanced for me. <laughs> now it, what's balanced for me, is not going to be balanced for Darren and it's to find the proper balance for them. And which leads me to why I got into metabolic and respiratory is to find what metabolically uh, Darren is at or Jill is at and you know for me I take it a step further and I I, I use personal training and the performance and in getting into their psyche as well what's stopping them from going forward in life and from doing another rep when I know they had another one or two or and I know they had another minute of pushing in on the treadmill what's stopping you is it the fear is it uh, you know, is it uh, uh, just something that triggered in her brain where, oh, it hurts, I got to stop right away, you know? How can I get them to go a little further into that fear? Oh, I'm going to have a heart attack. My, my heart rate was at 170. Is to slowly get them to feel better. You, you can't go run a marathon right away. You probably can. Uh, and, but if you slowly get people there it's kind of like the frog you put a frog into boiling water it's going to jump out but if you put uh water uh cold and you turned up the heat you put the frog in and slowly the heat rises rises it's not going to jump out because you're slowly introducing i know that's a bad analogy for the poor little froggy but <laughs> it goes to show you how how you know the humans, we, we need to adapt slowly. So I don't make people go deadlifting on the first day and, and uh, big squats. No, you got to basically build that foundation and build their confidence as well as their, you know, their, their muscle. So you need a whole bunch of stuff to be a good person to influence them, to motivate them and find out what their motivation is. Because most people, it's not to be, it's not to run like me to go do a, a 50 kilometer trail race. They just want to feel better, climb the stairs and, and be able to breathe and to, to help their depression or their emotions. Mm. So, yeah, it, 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 for me, my motivation is to just help every individual, whatever the case is, if it's the emotional level or if it's the physical or is it because they have a lot of pain? Is it because they have injuries? Is it because they have, you know, a lot of mental health issues? So it's, it's make sure that I'm well aware of all these different things and study it as much as I can. Even though I don't have a degree in psychology, uh, I've done so many courses in the last 10 years that, you know, I know which questions to ask, you know, and, and I know where to go get help if they do want specific help in the mental field or uh, uh, the anxiety field or they want to up their cortisone you know, down their cortisone and you know up their serotonins whatever their needs are is uh, i think society we need to make some uh, some changes um just because how fast the, the world is moving and sometimes you know what I'm going to give an example. I, I saw a big change in my son. I, I saw that he was getting stronger too. I was, how can you be stronger when you're not coming to the gym as much with me as, as you were? And I said, you're just you're more rounded. He says, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, he says, oh, one of my teachers is doing 15 minutes of yoga before class. And we do all these, you know, these poses and downward dogs and, and, says that's really been very helpful for me with for my anxiety and for 
a little bit of this depression, you know, everybody has some sort of, you know, lows. And I was like, wow, what a great teacher. I'd love to send a note to that teacher and say, you know what, it's making a big difference for Caleb. I can't imagine, you know, I can imagine what it's doing for, for others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was pretty impressed with a teacher to be able to, to do that with their teacher. I'm sure that's not in that teacher's curriculum, but wow to them, and, you know, big applause to that teacher. Awesome. Well, Joe, I'd like to applaud you for being a teacher by sharing yeah. your story, your experience, your wisdom today. Um, and I, feel that there'll be another connection we will have in the future and carry on a conversation to the next level. So to wrap things up, Joe, and to give you an opportunity to have the final words today, what would you offer um, as closing comments and remarks to the parent, the man, the dad out there, who has experienced trauma, who has experienced the loss of a uh, good friend to suicide, who has struggled with alcohol, um, and took those steps to climb your mountain. Closing remarks in that area, Jill, what would it be? Well, uh, number one, you have to accept that you do need the help. You need to park your ego uh, aside that you're not he man and, and, and a hero to your kids and so forth. You, to be a hero and to be the, uh, the person to inspire others is the person who is going to get help to better themselves. So the number one thing to do is to, you need to speak out and everything's kept in confidential. If you do go to, you know, you call the uh, uh, mental uh, health uh, uh, on on Albert Street. You know, everything's kept confidential. You know, if, you, if you're a, a you know an introvert and you don't like to talk about it with others, that's fantastic. Go there. Everything is kept, uh, you know, kept uh, at a very discreet manner, and. Uh, I'll give you a quick example. Um, I met one of my counselors uh, uh, at Centennial and I told him, hey, I got, you know, uh, I forget what I said to him. I got over two years now, you know, of, of, of sobriety. And he just smiled and nodded. I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. And uh, he kept on his way he with his wife. Me, I'm, a, I'm an extrovert. So it didn't matter to me. I'm like, you know, the more people know that, you know, it's doable. Especially, you know, some people doubted me so much. There's no way this guy could stay sober two years. And, and I did. Anyway, he gives me a call the next day. He says, you know, I'm so sorry. I didn't, I didn't like say, wow, congratulations. It's just that I want to keep, you know, everything private. I didn't know whether to say, you know, good job in front of my wife. I didn't. So I, I wanted to keep, you know, everything, um, you know, professional. And that's why I'm calling you today to say, wow great job you know and then he asked me what is working with you he says well it's not what is working now it's what everything i've learned from you from the other counselors and all that everybody contributed so my thing for the father the sons is is to go get help and 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 ask for it don't be shy i mean look at the golfers the hockey players uh professionals they all have people there to help them mentally and help them breathe. You know, this is, you know, this is one of the reasons I do what I do is to fix that shallow breathing, which causes anxiety to start learning to deep, you know, deep breathing. So you're not just sucking in carbon dioxide and making you panic. You know, you're getting some good oxygen. So reach for help. Start your climb of that mountain right away. Don't wait too long and, and bury that pain and, and ask for help right away. So that way you can get on your journey a lot faster and uh, than I did. <laughs> so mm. there's, yeah, reach out for help. Reach out to me. I keep everybody. I have a lot of people that message me. I keep everybody. I tell them right away that 
everything's confidential when you talk to me because I know how important it is and how hard it is to reach out. And, and I'm surprised about the people that reach out to me. I'm going, wow, I thought you had it all together. Well, of course, you know, Facebook, everybody has it all together on Facebook, but we all have our trials and tribulations and, 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 and faults and, and pain and fears. So we all got to reach out. We all got to help each other. Excellent. Jill, I'd like to thank you so much. And what we will do after the recorded portion of this uh, content is we'll provide your content to the audience. And I would strongly encourage uh, anybody who is watching this today, listening to and connecting with this uh, moment is to really reach out to Jill uh, and uh, start your journey or continue your journey, continue to take that step, continue to find your motivation and to climb your mountain. So, Jill, thank yes. you so much for Perfect. all the great stuff you are doing, my friend. Well, no, you're doing some great work as well. And I think, uh, uh, you know, you, uh, people like myself in the mental health and, and you know, your Eve Doucettes and all these different courses and people uh, that we have access to is just making our community a lot better. And that's my goal, right? Start with our community and, and start building outwards or a province and fellow Canadians. So I, I applaud you for doing what you do and, uh, and how many people you've touched. And, and I see who, who you've touched and, uh, and uh, make people rock stars too. So congrats to you too. All right. Thank you very much, Jill, and thank you, everyone, for taking time of your schedule to uh, connect with Jill and I. Have a great day. Bye.